What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. The other day I had an awesome opportunity to work with the king of pranks, Lance Stewart. He came by our office at Imagine Lifestyles to pick up our Lamborghini Huracan. He pulled a great prank on his parents with that car. There's gonna be a link to that video down below. But before he left, he took a couple of minutes to talk to us about his career on social media, his favorite cars, and even what the future of YouTube is gonna be for him. Go ahead and check that out now. But while you're there, be sure to click that like button, hit subscribe, and then leave me a comment because I'm going to be talking to Lance again sometime soon, and I want to know what questions you have for me to ask him. What's up, guys? This is Tom with Imagine Lifestyles. We are here today with the man, Lance Stewart. Hey. <laughs> He's coming through here today to pick up the ultimate, our Lamborghini Huracan. He's going to be putting together a uh, prank video where he's going to trick his parents with this car. There's going to be a link to that down in the bottom. But in the meantime, while he's here, I just wanted to ask you like, a couple quick questions. Let's do it. Uh, first off, i got to ask a simple one. What is your favorite car? My favorite car is actually a Lamborghini. Lamborghini Aventador, though. Like, I've always okay. dreamed of that. But this is the next best thing, obviously. This is sick. And uh, I can't wait to prank my family. Like my family knows that I love Lamborghinis and it's my dream car. So when I come home with this, they're gonna be freaking out. Especially cause like, my mom is just gonna go crazy. Cause she's been telling me to like, keep it low on my money, not to go overboard with like spending. You know, just typical mom stuff. And she's once she sees mom. this, she's gonna freak. Oh, that's great, that's great. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. freak her out. Yeah. You think you're going crazy with everything. <laughs> so as far as pranking your mom, I know that she is in a lot of your videos. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult video for you to make? Like, what was the hardest one for you to pull off to get that prank by her and freak her out? My mom doesn't believe a lot of the things that I do, to be honest. Like, I guarantee that when I bring this to my house, she's gonna be so skeptical off the, off the start. So, like, she's very skeptical about everything. Um, almost all my pranks is very hard to, like, prove to her that it's real. But my grandma is the most easily fooled. And, and people know that, like when people watch my videos, grandma is always, I'm always pranking her. She's easily, she's very gullible, to put it. Yeah, I, I feel bad <laughs> for grandma sometimes yeah. when I watch your videos. Yeah, <laughs> so like, I mean, it, it's definitely a lot harder to prank my mom. I'm really skeptical on like what her reaction is gonna be with this. I think she's not gonna believe it at first, but I mean, when it's parked in my driveway for like an entire day, she might believe it after, I don't know. Time and then obviously we're going to reveal to her that it's a prank, but we want to try and make it seem as believable as possible. Very cool. Well, so what then is on your ultimate prank bucket list? Like what's that one thing that you really want to fake them out with that would be like the, the most mind-bending thing that you could think of? I don't know. Maybe like me getting arrested. Maybe that would be pretty crazy. Well, you did the arrested phone call. We saw that yeah. one, right? But like for them to like actually see cops come to my house and take me out of my house, that would be... That would be pretty intense. I, like my grandma would be freaking out. Like my mom at that point definitely wouldn't know if it was real or not. So she probably would actually be freaking out. <laughs> so that would be pretty crazy. So with pranking, you know, your mom and your grandma and your dad all the time, your girlfriend all the time, has that made like family life at home more difficult? Are they just always like on they're, edge? They're kind of just like always on edge and on guard. Um, that's why, like, recently I've, I've had to try to become a little bit smarter about, like, how I do my pranks to make them more believable because, believe it or not, there are a lot of videos that I record that the reactions are just terrible and, like, it, it doesn't make a good video because they know it's fake and, like, the things that I'm doing aren't real um, and, obviously, it's just to prank them. So, I've had to delete a lot of videos or, like, footage or just completely not even do ideas because they're skeptical right off the bat and it just doesn't make for a good video. So as these videos are getting tougher and tougher for you to make, right, because your family's starting to catch on a little bit, mm. uh, what do you sell, see yourself doing with this over the next, you know, like five or ten years? I mean, I know for a fact I can continue pranking grandma. Once again, she's very gullible. But I don't know, like ultimately I have been trying to work on a TV show for like the family, like maybe get a reality TV show. It's currently in the works, so we'll see what happens with that. But ultimately, like long term, I want to get more in the industry of like acting and and potentially even be like a reality star. That would be awesome. Very cool. So I'll have my own reality show. So you built your whole career based on social media. You started out really on Vine. You moved over to all the other different platforms that are today. You've got millions of subscribers around the world. Yeah. 
to crazy. somebody who was just starting out, somebody young who just wants to get into this whole social media game, what advice would you be able to give to them? What would you tell them for, for somebody who's going to start? Okay, so the best advice is, one, it's going to be very hard at first, and you can't get discouraged. You just got to keep pushing through it. I know, like I started making videos on YouTube when I was nine years old, and I didn't kind of get like my big break until Vine, which was like five or six years later. So you just got to keep grinding for what you want. Don't give up. Um, consistency is the best, so like posting all the time, making sure maybe you're like, uh, even, even like using trends definitely helps, like when people were doing the Kiki challenge like the whole Drake thing. Um, there's, a, there's more of a chance of people seeing your content and your videos when you pick up on trends. Now obviously you don't wanna do trends for the, your entire career, but like as a first time person like being seen um, in the social media world, like definitely doing trends helps get your name out there a little bit and more people to see your stuff. But consistency overall is the best and just being original. That's a lot of things, that, that's a lot of the times that people struggle with, struggle with is being original and they blow up off of trends, but they never really last. Like you want to look for the long term, like longevity in this, and not just like how to blow up overnight and then not keep that longevity. So for those up and coming influencers, artists, you know, creators, whoever they may be, obviously there's a lot of different ways that they can get their content out there. There's a lot of different things they can do with it once they built that name for themselves. What is the the most lucrative option for them to pursue? Where should they go with this? It's, idea that they're working with. it's really depending on their content. I know like if, if people are trying to shoot for like a, a, a larger audience, like a, like a larger older audience, Facebook is definitely the way to go. If you're trying to look more for like kids, um, it, kids would be probably more like Instagram and YouTube. Um, but I mean, that doesn't mean that you can't have an older audience on YouTube. Um, but like uh, Facebook isn't really a like kid platform. You know, more older people use that, so it's really it's really depending on the demographics that you're trying to shoot for. I mean, me for example, I like reaching everybody and as many people as possible. So I literally like post my videos everywhere. So if I make if I make a prank video, um, I'll put it on YouTube. I'll chop it up and make it shorter for Instagram and Facebook. Even put it on Twitter or like apps like Musically and Vine when it was still available. So I still try to just get my uh, content out everywhere. So that's, that's a pretty good idea if people are trying to look to like uh, grow their platforms. Just post your content literally everywhere. And who knows, maybe one of those platforms could start gaining a lot of followers, I don't know. Last single question that I have for you is, knowing what you know now, having been through this for literally years, if you had to go back and start everything over again from nothing, what would you do differently? I mean, there's definitely been a lot of mistakes that I've made in my social media career um, that, like, I probably would change up or do different. Like, I've given people, like, different perceptions of myself that maybe, like, when someone's watching me on, on, like, the screen, you know, sometimes it's not always, like, my true self. And there's been stages I've, where I've gone through, like, depression and, like, trying to figure out who I am as a person. Like, the, the normal stuff that, like, an average person goes through. So like if I was somehow able to change like certain things that I've said maybe in the past or like the way I've gone about making videos, like obviously the, over time you learn and you progress and you get better at making content. Like if I was as good right now at making content as I was like beforehand and like I could just come in strong with uh, like right off the bat, like starting to like start out on social media, that would be, obviously be amazing but it's unrealistic unless you have like an entire team of people behind you. But it was just a, an entire learning process for me. Um, but yeah, just maybe like some things that I've said or like certain videos that I've done, I'd probably change up. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Lance, thank you so much awesome. for taking a couple minutes to talk to us. I really yeah, hope sure. you enjoy the car. I'm, oh, I'm totally going to. looking forward to this video. I'm more excited for the, about the video. Like the video is the <laughs> ultimate goal here. Let's make this the best you can. Awesome. The next day. What's up guys? So we're here picking up the car from Lance. I just got to know. How did it go? It went amazing. It went so good. My family completely believed it at first and then I waited an entire day to reveal to them that it was a prank. And then literally perfect timing, you showed up to grab the car back. But it went very, very well. That's awesome. That's a, who, teaser, I know, but who freaked out the most? Mom or dad? I feel like my dad did. Yeah. My dad was definitely the most excited and then my grandma was very excited too. My mom was just angry the whole time, honestly. <laughs> she was like, I can't believe you made this decision without me. 
Like, she, <laughs> but she had definitely a sigh of relief after she realized that it was a prank when I told her. So did, did it break Dad's heart a little bit that you have to give it back? I don't know. Did it? He's over there. Yeah. The, you want to you want to come in? I want to take it for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right, well we can set that up. Yeah, I, don't want to up. <laughs> All right. I don't want a handshake. I want the keys. <laughs> all right. Funny. Well, I, I think they're all happy with it, guys. Thank you so much. We're gonna have a link to your video coming up now or in a couple of seconds. Uh, link to your channel as well. Thank Lance, you. Thank you Great. so much. Looking awesome. Doing more with you. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Anytime.